we uh, go through the next uh, probably we're going to aim for 35 to 40 minutes and leave some time for some questions and answers uh, as Anna mentioned if you kindly just put your questions into the chat and if, if appropriate for the time we'll answer them as well but really I, I think one of the big reasons why we're here tonight is to assist our parents into understanding what is RSE at DBIS and hopefully to uh, remove any, um, I guess, anxiety, if that's what is in the community, uh, based around what are our kids being taught and uh, why are they being taught this? So there has been a journey with this. I did discuss this in one of our earlier uh, parent uh, afternoons that we spent together. But it has been a journey over a number of years. And it started when my role was implemented as the, uh, at the time, the wellbeing coach. And part of my role was to review what we were doing in the Learning for Life curriculum from early years through to year 13. And part of that we noticed we needed to redesign because we had areas that could have been strengthened. So part of the process between 2019 and 2021 was being able to implement and review we were hoping to be at a, another stage by now, but obviously uh, due to the COVID, we have had to uh, pause and really respond to our community. So we're now at a stage where we are, we've developed the planning and the teaching and the learning is about to happen. Specifically in the area of what we call RSE, which is an abbreviation for Relationships and Education. Now, a lot of discussions for this were based around our work with a CIS consultant. Now that is the Council of International Schools, which we are accredited to. So a lot of the reasons to what we have implemented is to assure that we are meeting the accreditation standards that they require for us to be a partnership within this uh, community of schools. Part of this is we developed a wellbeing team and as throughout a collaboration school-wide, uh, we've come to where we are today, where we are we are at a stage where we have been training our staff, and I'll talk more about that as we continue, and right now having a parent webinar to start the uh, advising our parents what we're doing in the classroom with their students. Now, specifically, I know your, uh, some of the parents here tonight have children in other phases of the school, early years and in secondary, but we're going to be specifically looking at the primary phase tonight, which is year three through to year six. So there are seven areas by the end of primary school that uh, our children will know about. And I'm going to talk briefly, and I'm going to allow you to read the slides as I go through. I want to remind those that have joined that uh, this is all being recorded. So if I do seem to go too fast, we're going to have this on our wellbeing hub along with the information that uh, will correspond. So relationship sex education looks at seven different areas. Families and people who care for them, caring friendships, respectful relationships, and online relationships. They go into more detail there, but this gives you a brief overview, remember, of what our children should know by the time they leave primary school. And I'm going to talk about how we get to that stage as I continue through this review. Uh, and so, and the other three are being safe, online and media, which is very particular for our current climate. And also to uh, the one area which I feel, uh, being a parent myself, is the area that causes a, a number of us concern, which is the sexual health area. Once again, what you're reading there, that uh, this is what we will be allowing our primary children to know by the time they leave primary school. And I'll go into more detail very soon. And how did we get to this stage? A number of you that are here tonight may know about these two curriculums. We have the PSHE curriculum that comes from the UK. Now, some of you that uh, have a relations back with the UK will understand that the UK have gone through some statutory gu guidelines for what their children uh, in their schools must have delivered to them. We are we are taking that into consideration of what we will do within our community context. And I'll explain that more too. The other area that we used for guidance was the UNESCO guidelines. And I'm going to go into more detail about what those are as well, because they inform us as staff on what we have chosen to do, and specifically as the well-being team, the progressions. 
And the reason why I bring up this, and I'll go into some examples to illustrate, is because when some of us go off and do some extra research into these two curriculums, I want you to have a clear understanding to the way we saw it as staff and the way that we saw this with consultation with our CIS uh, consultant. Now, the PSH sheet in brief is broken into three areas, health and well-being, relationships, and living in the wider world. Within these three areas, it is broken into different subsectors, which I've been through before in our last uh, parent webinar, but there are eight different areas within that. So we've taken out the eight areas, we've looked at what we were offering, uh, we strengthened what we had, and importantly, we have combined it with what I'm about to show you now, which is the UNESCO guidelines. This is broken into eight concepts, and these eight concepts that we have, and I'll go through them, are from early years to year 13. As you read some of the subheadings, I want you to be aware of the, the maybe the initial reaction when you see something like concept two, values, rights, culture, and sexuality. And I'm going to break down these in regards to a, a lot of the stigma that we have around the words that are used in relationships, sex, and education. And how does this correlate with primary school? And the other three concepts which we generally focus on within primary school are the, the concepts here, violence and staying safe, skills for health and well-being, and the human body and development. And I'll go into more of this as well. We do start to focus on key concepts seven and eight when we go into secondary school. And this is uh, very, very important for those of you that will do further research within these, uh, this guideline here. So concept one, two, three, four, five, and six is what we primarily focus on. And then also to the relationship, uh, the relationship section from the PSHE. All right, so uh, this is what I'm talking about when we look at the, sec uh, the subsections. Some of you may remember this from one of my other parent webinars. So I look at violence, objectives, and key concept three. Uh, you'll see one of these say uh, violence. I'm flicking through this. Yes, yeah, sorry. Key concept four. If I look at that and it says uh, violence and staying safe, and my child's in uh, year three. I'm going, why does my child need to learn about violence? When we look at what the objective actually is, in year three, it's important to be able to recognize bullying and violence and understand that these are wrong. So learners will be able to define teasing, bullying, and violence. They acknowledge that bullying and violence are wrong, that are never the victim's fault, including violence that is carried out by a family member or other adult, et cetera, et cetera. Why do I want to illustrate this in full? Because a, lot, a, a number of our community, including myself, will see certain subheadings and right away, once again, as I mentioned before, because of how we relate to these particular words, we sometimes think the worst. And if my child is in year three, year four, year five, year six even, depending on my background, my, my own culture, my own religions, uh, my, my own thoughts about who should be teaching our children, I therefore will come to a judgment. But what I want to be really clear is that there's been a large amount of thought that has gone into the planning of what is age appropriate. And I'm going to go into more about that very, very soon. So why do we teach RSE? I won't read this word for word, but hopefully as I'm talking, I hope that you can read through. Really, the, the important part from my own personal opinion, but also my, my opinion as a staff member, is that we want our children to be informed. We want our children to be able to be at an understanding where they understand what is a healthy relationship and what may be a relationship that is not safe. What is appropriate touch and what would be an inappropriate touch? What are the names for the parts of my body? Who do I speak with if I am unsure? If I do have some concern? We want our students to be informed of what it is to be kept safe. The second part, now that our online world is an important part of what we do every day, we want our students to be safe in the online aspect of their learning, of their development. We want them to be able to correlate relationships in the world 
and also in the online world. We want them to have an understanding at an age-appropriate time what is safe and what is unsafe. We want our children to be informed in a way that is factual, that is non-biased, and that our children have a knowledge of their changing body so that they are prepared for the changes that will occur. So that all of our children will never at a time feel that there is something wrong with them. I know that this raises certain emotions depending on our personal view, but everything is done in such a way that the heart of all this is for the safety of our children that come to DBIS. I want to be very clear here. At primary school, we do not teach or discuss the sex act. This is part of the secondary school science curriculum. Within our own science curriculum within primary school, which is dealt with through the discovery concepts, there is a large amount of talk that is spoken about through animals, through plants. All of these intertwine with each other. So our children also, through other areas of the curriculum, will be discussing such language. But the one thing that I find really important to discuss and inform parents is, is that our children will find out. And if our children are having this education within an environment that is factual, that is non-biased, then they will find out the information that is appropriate to their age, that is appropriate in an environment where they can discuss it with staff that have been trained to inform them appropriately for their age. Now, I also want to be really clear here too. Our staff have been trained that if there are inappropriate Inappropriate is the wrong word. If there are questions from our students that are not part of the age progression, and our teachers have clear guidelines on this, that they will inform our students in a safe way that they can go home and speak with mum and dad about that. And we will have processes that will follow that up as well. Miss Lees, do you have anything to add there while I get myself a drink of water? <laughs> um, I think it's been really comprehensive so far. Thank you, Mr. Broderick. Um, Yale asked a, a really good question about lessons and will they cover vocalising healthy boundaries in relationships, to which I replied to say yes. Um, and actually one of the objectives links to uh, boundaries and sort of consent and how to have a positive working relationship um, within within homes, within families, within school, within many different contexts. Um, and also the objectives that we're actually teaching with, through the RSE units, they'll all be sent home to you in year group specific letters. So we're only sending home the ones that specifically relate to relationships and sexual education, purely because if we were to send home everything that linked to um, health and well-being with regard to the, you know, the children's safety online, it's a, it's a huge document and actually from conversations with parents we think that the area that or oh, what you need the most reassurance to know that actually this is what is happening so that you can follow up with conversations at home in particular and be aware of those of the objectives that are being taught that's why we're sharing those specific objectives with you um, and they'll all be shared prior to the lessons being taught. So you'll be aware of the days in which they're being taught or the date in which they'll start those conversations and um, and the objectives that will be taught across those sections of, um, of the Learning for Life curriculum. So I wanted to illustrate, when I talk about age appropriacy and progressions, I want to use, uh, so we have a subsector I talked to you about that is broken into a number of subsectors and relationships is one of them. And as you can see in front of you, I really wanted to illustrate how it progresses. Um, I know you, uh, this can be read, but it starts in year three. And it's simply, how can friendships change over time about making new friends and the benefits of having different types of friends? And as we go for uh, year four, it, it already progresses. We start looking at what constitutes a positive, healthy friendship. We start talking about the values that we see. And then we start talking about, where do I get support with problems and difficulties? and how this applies to online friendships as well. So we, we talk about this in year four. And in year five, we move forward to how peers can, peers can influence 
our desire for peer approval? And how do we recognize the effect of our online actions on others? And then in year six, as we're getting ready to move off to uh, secondary school, how do we recognize if a friendship is making us feel unsafe or uncomfortable and how to manage this and ask for support if necessary? Now, this is one illustration of how we uh, ensure age appropriacy and progression. And as uh, Ms. Lee has already touched on, you know, we have we have hundreds of outcomes that we cover within the Learning for Life uh, uh, curriculum. And all of these outcomes, by the time they get to the year six overview, right, it is broken down like this. Now, when we do research in the PSHE curriculum and also to the UNESCO curriculum, those that will see that, it's really important that uh, if you do the research, that you notice that the amount of time and effort and assurances that we've made as a staff to make sure that does this does this meet with what we're seeing in our classrooms uh, from the review? Is Are these the gaps that we saw? And then, of course, we've got overlapping that, the, the requirements that we have to meet for our accreditation as well. And I'm going to talk more about our work with our community very soon. So at all times, of course, being the head of well-being, well-being is uh, at the forefront of what I have uh, in regards to our students. So I recognize that part of being taught, and once again, specifically in regards to the RSE component. Remember, this is only part of the Learning for Life curriculum. But when we deal with aspects of um, the RSE, you as parents may know that our students have had personal experiences, okay? Or you may, as a family, have personal views. We encourage you to talk with your classroom teacher. Once, as Miss Lee's has already spoken about, once the letters have been sent to you as the parents of our community, specifically relating to the year group your child is in, if there are concerns about experiences that your child may have had, or maybe you want to uh, uh, strengthen the teacher's understanding in something that could be used uh, that is in the community being discussed. We had a, a quick chat about uh, the discussion that's already happening within our community groups. If there are things being discussed that may assist our teachers, uh, assist our students, these are definitely things that we would encourage to happen. So personal experiences, personal views, negative and positive as well. Please talk to your classroom teacher in that instance. Um, as always, parents do have the right to withdraw uh, from part of the sex education aspects. Would encourage you not to. Uh, that is because why I've, what I've spoken about before, we would rather your children have the opportunity to be part of what their parents are learning, being part of a, a, a environment where the information is age appropriate, that it is non-biased, etc. But if for some reason you as the parent chooses to withdraw, then a request needs to be um, made through with the classroom teacher and there will be uh, a meeting taking place so that we can discuss obviously the benefits but also too that we can record it as part of a process. So what next? As we move forward, we're gonna be continuing to plan and embed. For those of you that will research through the PSHE document and the UNESCO document, you'll notice that there are a number of objectives that we, have chosen as a team that we will cover at different stages. So we still have uh, the opportunity to be guiding our curriculum document. And those that guidance is not only what the teachers think, it's what we're hearing from our students, but also to, as we move forward, the consultations that we will begin to have after this first opportunity of being able to embed the teaching within the classroom. The way it is now is we see it as a fluid document that will change with what is happening within our community and what our community are wanting. For example, uh, I think one of the things that is clear is that there are different views on when our children should be taught, the taught information about the Sex Act. And some schools, they do it in primary. We have chosen as a school this year to continue with that in secondary school. But as we move forward, we may notice that the discussions from this year that it requires us to review this. But this will be all done in regards to parent consultation, not just what the staff think. The third part there, letters to parents. 
that is the parents who will be coming up before your children are taught any of the lessons specifically around relationships, sex and education, and they will have the objectives in detail about what, we, what will be covered. This will give our families the opportunity to maybe have pre-discussions with their children about what may be discussed in class. It may also give you an opportunity to, if you wish, uh, look at resources and materials that you may wish to buy for home, such as picture books, story books, et cetera, that would correlate with this. And staff, especially myself, are happy to uh, discuss these areas with you. But importantly, the letters will inform you of what is going to be happening in your classroom and when it will be happening to give you that opportunity to talk as a family about your next steps as well. In regards to uh, covering that the area uh, of what I needed to, how the curriculum was informed, how it was developed, what the progressions are about, the very, being very clear-headed to spell the myth that we that we will not be talking about the sex act at primary school, um, and also too that when our community are talking about a certain vocabulary, that we encourage that they look at the depth that we've gone to uh, in regards to, for example, the illustration that I showed to you about the violence aspect. It's really important. But I think we have uh, time now for some uh, Q&A, Ms. Lees. Uh, yes. Um, we have got uh, another great question from Yale. She was asking about which year group her children taught how babies are made. And that's currently in the year seven science curriculum. Mm. Um, and then in addition to that, she's asked what year for puberty? Right, okay. So uh, when, we, when we say the word puberty, we start, we start looking at the changes that will occur, okay? Occur to the body, we start discussing these areas in year four. But we want, once again, we want to think about the, the progression of this. We start, we start talking about the hygiene in year four, okay? We don't start talking about hair growth or uh, pre preparation for the, the menstrual cycle, okay? These are things that are discussed in year six. So when I say to you year four, you know, I hope you understand that year four with the appropriate aspect. Once again, though, you know, um, you know this is an area through us having the opportunity to teach it this year, from parent consultation, from what our students are saying, this might be something that we need to uh, bring uh, to earlier, et cetera, year five. Year five, of course, they start talking uh, in more depth about the reason why for hygiene, et That's cetera. right. So I've got year five objectives mm. here now. Um, and year five, it starts to think about being able to identify uh, the external genitalia um, and internal reproductive organs. And again, that's touched on with both animals and humans with regard to um, human reproductive systems um, and links to puberty. And then the other key objective in year five is about how hygiene routines change during puberty and the importance of keeping clean to maintain personal hygiene. And then when we move into year six, it's thinking about, um, in fact, it's, it's a repetition of that same objective about keeping keeping themselves clean and how important that is. And then, you, as, as um, Mr. Broderick started to say then about the physical and emotional changes, they're touched on in year six, thinking about when you're approaching puberty. And of course, with um, so many of our children now, they're facing puberty and they're hitting puberty at a lot younger age. So, so having conversations about puberty in year five and um, is really important because many of our children uh, do start with their periods in year five. So we often need to adapt and sometimes they're small group conversations or one-to-one -one conversations. And that's why the role of the classroom teacher is so important or the year group leader or any trusted adult in school or the relationship between the parents and the teacher as well is, is so important. So that if a child is going through puberty, perhaps a little earlier than their friends, then they know that they've got a safe space. They know that they can go and visit the nurse um, if they've had an accident, they know that there are um, resources for them to use down in the nurse's station very discreetly. Um, and it's all it's all just, it's subtly done and it's supportive in a, in a safe space for them. 
Uh, Rosanna has asked a, a great question as well. Um, inclusiveness, of, of, uh, inclusiveness of gender differences and respect. Mm. So this is this is an area that in our uh, current time and age, absolutely, we have. This was an area when when I spoke about the review that we realised that this is definitely there were areas that we could strengthen. So uh, I believe that we be, the specifics we begin as early as year three discussing right. the different types of families. Okay, so the different types of families, and then we start discussing gender and specifically relating to that not all genders are, I, I, I don't have the document in front of me. I can share a, a couple of um, quotes with you if you like, Mr. Broderick. It's, oh, yeah. um, so in year, in year three, we touch on the norms and peer influence. So you might look at um, good and bad peer influence, etc. cetera. Um, peer pressure, that is touched on in year three and positive behaviour as well that could influence peers in, in, a, in a strengthening way. And then in year four, they tend to look then at the social construction of gender and gender norms. So the difference between biological sex and gender um, and how they would define those the differences between them and about different families as well. So families, individuals, peers, communities, they're all great sources to learn about um, gender. So they can look at different sources of information about sex and gender, and know that perceptions about sex and gender are influenced by many different sources. And Rosanna um, has also asked another really useful question. When students, oh, sorry, there's another one too. Um, are they taught separately or as a group with physical differences? And that is, Perfect, perfect time question, Rosanna. Previously, we used to have all of those classes separately. So we used to have the boys and the girls. But actually, it's been, well, the research suggests that actually having those shared conversations and having the shared level of information, it's so important for our children to know what the other gender is, is going through. And actually exposing them to that, is that level of empathy and understanding and they, they're taught all of that together in the year seven science curriculum. So why would we separate them lower down the school? You know, they have the pants program together in year one and two, and it's actually, it's us that's brought about this um, segregation almost as you go through. So they'll be brought together, but we are going to leave a, a couple of opportunities. Um, I think Jason mentioned it earlier about having an ask it basket. So for the children to be able to, to write questions in confidence, to be able to share with their teacher. And so there'll be an opportunity for them to, if they feel more confident to write something down rather than raise a hand, which is completely understandable. Um, but we will also give them an opportunity to have a, a few conversations about, um, or within their own gender groups. So for example, they'll all hear the information together, they'll all have the questions together, and if it's deemed appropriate, so for example, before a trip, um, we were hoping to go to Thailand with our year sixes, having a conversation with the girls about actually what to do if they did start their period or if they're on their period when they go to the to camp, that's quite a specific uh, thing that might be only pertinent to a few, but useful for, for the girls to hear and to have those conversations with the nurse um, and their classroom teachers as well. And the other question was great um, about not asking age appropriate questions and teachers would direct them to parents. So with um, with that level of communication, it will always just come from either a class teacher giving you a call. And please, if, you're, if your child does ask a question that we, we don't feel that we can answer, it's absolutely no reflection on your child. And actually, we really encourage curiosity in, in all subjects. And and it's, it's something that they will be curious about because often it's a taboo subject, but the more we talk about it, the less taboo it will become. Um, so you'll probably just get a, a quick phone call home and to say, this is what your child has asked. If, if you would like to follow it up at home, um, by all means, or if you, you know, if that's then up to you to decide as a family how you would like to, to broach it. Thank you. Um, and then how do the parents support this at home? Yeah, another great okay. question. So 
we've got obviously to support at home part of the reason why we're sending out the letters to be able to inform you what is going to be discussed in the class uh, to begin with that's one way uh, and as I mentioned I'm a resource at school that uh, I, I'm happy to discuss appropriate uh, resources to use uh, the classroom teacher obviously you can discuss with them and, and it's likely that they, they will be asking me as well. The second part, and if I could share a tab, can I can I share a different tab, Miss Lees? Yes, you can. If you yeah. just um, push stop. Yeah, you might need to just do a different present button. Yes. Okay. So uh, a number of our families uh, may not be aware of this. Is an area that I am uh, definitely. Oh, I'm going to share this screen. Um, please have patience with me. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, on our, is it sharing now, Miss Lees? Oh, yes. It is Here indeed. Okay, so within our hub, which is definitely an area where I'm uh, really uh, encouraging us for uh, regards to the greater realm of well being. So, learning for life fits under our well being, pastoral care, etc. Within this area, not only will we have resources that will be appropriate, there's going to be a bit of a change in this over the next uh, week, but I'll have an area where we'll have appropriate resources for our families to use for uh, RSE. All right? But I also too wanted to take a moment to just let you know that there are a number of resources on the tab already under wellbeing resources. Some of you may not know about this. Some great links that can assist us Okay, this is a new one that went up. Mrs. Walter gave me this one the other week. Brilliant ideas in that, in that uh, booklet. I don't want to tangent us away from RSE, but also to uh, in the medical health. But this workshop as well, because some of you are on the, the chat groups with our other uh, members of the community, they will be under the DBIS Wellbeing Workshop. So all of our workshops that we've done in the past are up here as well. This one will be put under here also. So once again, that's in our hub. It's under Wellbeing. There's going to be a little bit of a face change there when you hit the platform in the next couple of weeks, but there will be an area specifically to assist with how do we teach at home. Perfect. Thank you. Your, your questions and, and all of your comments have been so incredibly positive and um, it makes a massive difference to to feel that you're that you know that you're part of this journey and that you're supportive of that so the fact that you've all attended this evening is hugely appreciated thank you and as Jason said this recording will be available for for any families that might want to watch it but we're, we're also here open door policy if there are things that you'd like to talk through with us certainly when you get those letters home and the you have the objectives talk to your classroom teacher talk to your year group leader talk to us and often it's just the case of of taking away any of of our concerns because actually the way in which they'll be delivered to the children is in an age appropriate manner and and it's something that they they will be wanting to learn about, and it's about it's up to us to be able to help facilitate with that learning in a in a safe way with honest information, um, so that we can empower them to make to make choices and to feel comfortable. So, thank you very very much for joining us. I'm going to stop the recording now. Was there any other questions that we can help to answer before we sign off? None from me. I'm just saying thank you both. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Yael. Much appreciated. Oh, I just wanted to ask if you could send that link uh, with the letter because most parents won't go through this recording and uh, the information. So if the link to the all the well-being and the, you know, the resources you have, you could add that to the letter because they will read the letter, but they might not go to the hub, you know. So that they can go and do their own research. That's a great idea. Thank you, Rosanna. Perfect. Right. Well, I'm going to stop the recording then. Thank you very much, Mr. Broderick.